Good morning, everyone. Welcome. I would like to tell you about my new book. It's called Tough Problems, Tender Solutions, and I'm pretty happy with it. It's available in both Kindle and quality paperback at Amazon.com. Maybe the best way I can let you know about the book is just to start reading from it. I'm going to start reading from the introduction. The book is called Tough Problems, Tender Solutions. Introduction. This book is a love story. It is the story about the love between the most wonderful God and those who love him. The refrain from an old rock and roll song is to know, know, know him, is to love, love, love him. And so it is. These were the opening lines of the introduction to a book I wrote a couple of years ago titled A Day with the Lord. Nothing has changed. The whole story of history is still a love story. But most people don't find the love that would solve all of their problems and give them joy and peace. There are reasons why people go to their grave never finding this wonderful love. First, they allow problems to get to them and to fill their minds, hearts, and hours. They become so fixated on struggling with their problems that they forget to stand back and get help from the one source that could really solve them. Of course, it is not all their fault. Part of the problem is the authorities that preceded them and who purport to lead and teach them. These authorities are themselves struggling with issues and have failed to find the holy grail of guidance from within and above. All they can do is teach others to futilely struggle with the problems just as they did. The second reason why people fail to find the perfect love they have always wanted is that they resent other people. Resentment, hatred, judgment, and grudges block us from finding love. You cannot hate and find love at the same time. Make no mistake about it, unless you are willing to let go of your resentments toward others, especially your parents, you cannot find the true solution to your problems. The third reason why most people fail to find lasting solutions, fulfillment, and love is that they keep struggling with and resenting their issues. Resenting and struggling only involves you more with the problems you're struggling with. So immersed and overwhelmed by the struggle do you become that you forget to stand back and get the big picture. The fourth reason why we never find love and salvation from all our ills is that we are looking for the wrong kind of love. We have a faulty idea of what love is, and so we look for the kind of love that glorifies us and which comforts our wrong self. When true love appears, perhaps in the form of patient correction of our errors, we avoid it because it makes us feel bad. Finally, most people never find the secret to life because of something called emotion. We all have been taught that feelings are a good thing and that we should give in to them. But feelings are, in fact, emotions and excitements that rise to get a grip on the mind and prevent it from reaching to heaven and finding the inner light. You may have noticed that I use terms like love, fulfillment, solutions, peace of mind, joy, and the secret to life almost interchangeably. This is because they are all the same thing. Find one and you have found them all. I've often said that the grace that God offers us is a package deal. You get it all. So you either have it or you don't. If you don't have it, then you better search for it and do so sincerely. God is the answer. Find him and you found it all. All I can do is offer some clues to finding the way and provide a little bit of discussion about some of the things that tend to get in the way of meditating properly, finding the inner light, and relating to others properly. So that is what this book is about. The beautiful thing is that your problems, and most people have plenty of them, hold the key to your eventually conquering and rising above them. Currently, unless you are advanced on the meditative path to God, you are buried under layer upon layer of memories and conditioning based on reacting wrongly in the past. In this state, when a new issue comes along, 
The memories and conditioning of the past rise up and overpower you, drawing you down into the same emotions, worries, and ineffective remedies you used in the past. In this condition, even if you see that what you did in the past was ineffective, you still don't know what else to do. But let's say you begin to awaken, see the need for some changes, and start meditating. Let's say that the light dawns and you begin to experience repentance, the quiet purging of your errors in God's light. Now you are chastened and humbled. Now you have a little insight into how to handle things henceforth. You see, for example, that you must not resent others. You see that there are no true solutions to be found in worry and intellectual analysis. You see that most people are lost too, so you can't look to them for answers. Now you are on the path back to reason and dignity in God's light. And it is precisely now that problems are beneficial. Why? Because just as when, in order to develop practice and skill at playing the piano, you need a piano to practice on, so you need practice applying the new ways that grace makes possible. In order to be able to apply your newfound way of looking at life, you need issues to arise so that now you can practice your new way. Each new problem gives you the opportunity to remain patient, to look to intuition, and to move with the energy of love instead of impatience and resentment. Now relating to people and solutions properly, the word becomes flesh. The insight and understanding you are given in your moment of need, together with the power to remain patient, which you are given by God's grace, now is good for others and good for you too, as you bring forth the good from within. Now you overcome each issue the right way, and you stand in awe of the power of patience. And growing in grace, you find even more faith to face greater issues. James says it this way in his epistle, My brothers and sisters, count it all joy when you experience various trials, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. That's the introduction to my book. If you find something of value in my little lectures, my videos and radio program and so on, I think you would like the books because they go into more depth and you can read a little bit and then stop at any point. See, if I'm talking, then I tend to get on a roll and I go on and on, which is nice. But it's also nice to be able to read something I wrote. Read until all of a sudden you see something. You say, oh, I see. And then at that point, you can put the book down and just stay with that little insight, that realization. And then perhaps a little flow will start for you that realization will lead to another, or that insight leads to another and another. It's very sweet. You take it with you as you go through your daily activities. I hope you enjoyed this little talk about my new book, Tough Problems, Tender Solutions.